even though I'm probably old as dirt to you guys, in terms of writing, I'm young, right? I can do this forever. I can be 80 years old, 85, 90, as long as I'm breathing and my brain's operating, I can write. I came to this really brand new at 28. So if you guys are starting at 12, 13, and 15, you have a 13 to 15 year head start on me. As a writer, you have your whole life to develop your craft and, and dedicate yourself to it. So um, I say if it's something that you're even thinking about doing, give it time and, and don't rush yourself. You don't have to really, you know, um, feel like you need to be successful out the gate, but it's something that's there for you and you can get better with over time. There's a saying, right? Um, anything worth doing is worth doing well. But there's um, another saying that I really take to is anything worth doing is worth doing badly. With writing, you know, I gave myself that permission early on to be horrible at it um, until, you know, I, I wasn't. So the thing I would say is to just read whatever's closest to you, right? Mm. Um, and start there. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, the classic poetry or classic um, fiction, you know, novels, or is it just something that you just happen to dig? Um, you read and then that leads you to something else and something else. So just jump in and give yourself time and you do it badly until you're, you're not bad at it anymore. You know, the thing is not to just put it away and say, okay, I've identified why it sucks and it's just a thing that sucks and, and leave it there. But now you have the opportunity to go back in and then, you know, kind of flesh out those parts that need uh, developing. Um, and it could have been anything, you know, that's the whole reason we draft, mm -hmm. right? Um, the majority of the writing process, and I think this is true of any genre, happens in the revision process, right? So um, whether you're talking about a poem, a play, right, a work of fiction, um, you do, you're, right, you're on the right track. You get that first draft out, and then you identify what needs to be done now. You go read, you go do your research, and you, you see who you can steal from. You have centuries of people who come before you who can show you, right, the way. And that's what we're doing all the time. Even now, I mean, like, there's a big, there's shelves behind me, but I also keep like stacks of books, like right next to me, like that's all I do down here. Like I'm stealing from people all the time and it doesn't stop. My biggest fear is that I've already said everything that needs to be said. People say, oh, this is a, a positive quality of a writer. They found their voice. And a lot of young writers, that's one of the things they're most interested in early on is how do I find my voice? How do I find my voice? It's not really something you want to settle into too early, right? Here I am, 49, and two books in. I pray I don't have a voice yet because, I, you know, I don't want people to say, this is, oh, this sounds like a John Murillo poem. You want to be constantly evolving. Um, and not locked into a voice too early on. So that's a fear of mine, you know, that uh, I'm afraid of locking into a voice to a particular subject matter too early on. It's important to put the work first, right? And what I mean by that is what makes a word the right word depends on what you're trying to do with the work, okay? So you're not trying to show off. You're not, you don't want to, you're not trying to put pretty words or fancy words or polysyllabic words to show how smart you are. You want the story or the poem to do what it needs to do. What you think the work is doing might change as you're revising, right? And what's gonna happen is over time, more of you drafts, something's gonna click and it's gonna feel right to you. It's gonna feel right and then now you know you're doing your job. I think a writer's first job is to write, it's like a painter's job is to paint a ball player's job is to play ball. And I don't think necessarily that we have any more responsibility than any other citizen to speak to this moment. I feel like a garbage collector, a nurse, um, a gardener, and a butcher are citizens just like we are, and they have the same right to speak to what's going on around them. We do need our James Baldwins and our Audrey Lords, right? We need our 